Good morning guys, Dr. Val here. Uh, welcome to Coffee Chats. I am in a different time zone today, so I did not um, start this live video when I normally would have, but that's okay. You can watch it anytime on the Facebook page. Today I'm going to talk about stress and what it does to your body. This is my healthy tip number five, which is reduce stress. We live in a very stressful culture, even though you don't realize it. Your body doesn't have a way to distinguish between a chemical stressor, an emotional stressor, or a, um, my mind just went blank, um, a physical, a chemical or emotional stress. Those three things, the brain interprets all one way. It has one stress response. So when you open your um, internet bill, when you uh, look at the grocery, um, <laughs> you're standing in line and she brings everything up and you're like, oh my word. Um, there was a study recently that showed that in our culture, we get a sense of stress 20 different times throughout the day on average. Uh, some a lot more, some a lot less. What about when your kids trash some room you just walk into? Or, you know, something breaks, your car breaks down, something at work happens, a deadline, school, whatever it is, you know, a fight with a spouse. All of those things are a stressor on the body and your brain has one response. So let me tell you what's going on in the body and then I'll tell you how it affects so many areas in your life so you have to pay attention to stress you can eat a super healthy diet you can take all the right supplements you can um, do all these other things right but if you have a ton of stress in your life and you're not finding a way to deal with that it overrides everything um, any benefits that you're getting in other ways of your health so it really is important to um, to pay attention to stress so what happens in a stress response? Your brain, the hypothalamus in your brain says, oh my word, I'm stressed. However, it got that um, impulse or input. Once the body says it's stressed, the hypothalamus sends a signal to your adrenal glands. The adrenal glands pump out cortisol, um, adrenaline, epinephrine. It's revving your body up for that fight or flight um, crisis mode. Everything is going into crisis mode. It's the I'm stressed because I need to run away from a tiger or get yourself out of a really dangerous situation. And then all of those stress hormones are supposed to go back down to normal. In our culture, we live with chronic stress. They never do. Um, so all of those, uh, you know, adrenaline, epinephrine, cortisol create these huge cascades all throughout the body. Um, your um, epinephrine tells your uh, stimulates the liver to produce glucose because it's assuming oh my word there's a situation I have to get out of it it assumes it's physical it tells your liver to rather than the liver's job one of the liver's jobs is to take sugar from your diet and it converts it into fat for storage well basically instead when you're stressed, epinephrine and cortisol, uh, epinephrine is telling your liver, oh my word, we're going to be stressed. We need to provide the muscles with tons of sugar. So the body tells the liver, it reverses that process, and it turns things into sugar. It starts creating sugar, okay? Um, cortisol does that as well. Uh, it's telling the body, make more sugar because I'm in a crisis situation. So, because that's the fastest form of fuel. It's not the best. Um, it's not the most efficient, but it's the fastest. So the body tells the liver through those hormones, make more sugar. So the liver pumps out more sugar. Your sugar load goes up because the body thinks, I need to get away from a tiger. Um, <clears throat> all of your blood flow in your body is diverted to your heart because okay I'm gonna have to run away from a tiger that crisis mode it 
pulls all of your circulation into the vital organs. So <clears throat> in your extremities, a lot of the capillaries start to shut down a little bit. Hem, fingers, toes, um, <clears throat> you know, your arms and legs get less circulation. Whatever the body thinks is not critical, it diverts blood flow away from that. Digestion is one thing that the body thinks is not critical. So it slows down blood flow to the digestive tract to push it into the central um, circulatory system more. So your body can be pumping more blood out to your muscles. That's the idea because your body thinks, oh, I'm ready to go. I need to be, you know, running away from something. So decreased blood flow to your gut, decreased digestive fluids get produced. So your whole digestion slows down. In short term, that's good. Long term, bad. Um, you end up with less hydrochloric acid produced in your stomach, which actually leads to more signs of heartburn. Um, it's a common misnomer that when you have heartburn, it's because your stomach is making too much acid. Usually it's the exact opposite that the heartburn is because there's acid in the wrong place, but it's not because you have too much, it's because you have too little, and too little acid in the stomach actually makes the top um, esophageal sphincter at the bottom of the esophagus where it drops into the stomach, it makes it relax if that acid level is not at the right level. It's too, you have too little acid in the stomach that relaxes it, and so what is there gets pushed up into the bottom of the esophagus and that leads to heartburn. Increasing your body's production of acid actually makes that um, hold tighter at the bottom of the esophagus and uh, you don't get um, heartburn anymore. So it makes sense that the body doesn't care about digestion if you're trying to run away from a tiger. So your stomach acid production actually drops, but that leads to heartburn. Um, it leads to digestive process, uh, problems. It leads to crazy imbalances in your gut microbiome. Things start to switch um, and flip and the bad bacteria can grow higher. You now have a ton of sugar around that makes your yeast grow more all over in the gut. So it can lead to digestive problems down the road from that. <clears throat> Again, I'm talking about chronic long-term stress, which in our culture is kind of a given. You have to work really hard not to be stressed. Um, cortisol also um, basically eats the magnesium up in the body. <clears throat> it revs up a number of processes, um, but it degrades magnesium. Magnesium is needed for like 4,000 different um, processes, enzymatic processes in your body. Your body works by converting like an inactive form of vitamin D to an active form of vitamin D. Well, how does that happen? Magnesium has to be a cofactor attached to that enzyme in order for your body to take this form and turn it into this form. Your entire, the chemistry of your body works this way, is it takes this and converts it into this by a enzyme and usually attached to that enzyme is magnesium. Magnesium is a key uh, cofactor because it's necessary in over 4,000 different um, processes that your body does. So it can't turn this inactive form into this active form. It can't break down this into this. And when cortisol is high, it drastically reduces the amount of magnesium that's in your body that's available. It breaks it down. <clears throat> your body does replenish things, but you need to, our diets are very depleted in magnesium, and the body only has so much magnesium. So it puts it where it's most needed. So when you're really stressed, you never have enough magnesium in your body. We don't, in general, because we don't eat enough to replenish that in our body. So magnesium becomes critically low. Um, your adrenal glands can be stressed from the constant stimulation um, of the, the hypothalamus telling the adrenal glands pump out all these stress hormones. Um, <clears throat> so there's some things called um, adrenal fatigue and adrenal insufficiency. 
Um, those are real uh, situations where the adrenal glands are overworked, way overworked. And that leads to a lot of fluctuations in all of this stuff downstream. Um, <clears throat> and the adrenal glands actually are uh, have a very key role in a lot of things because of what they're producing. Um, so back to the um, back to the high sugar. We'll go back to that. Your body thinks it's in crisis mode, so it's telling the the epinephrine and the cortisol are telling the liver <clears throat> make more sugar. Cortisol itself is a stress hormone that raises your body's sugar. Um, what happens when your sugar is high um, is that, first of all, your body will never be in fat burning mode. You will not lose weight, period. You cannot lose weight. From emotional stress, from physical stress, from whatever, your, your body will not be able to physically lose weight. Um, it also increases your sugar cravings because the body's like, I need more sugar. So it it actually generates more sugar cravings, more emotional. We say it's emotional overeating. When you get stressed, some people really just, they stress eat. That's a real thing, but that's partly because they're more sensitive to that body's trigger saying, I need more sugar, I need more sugar, I need more sugar, I'm stressed out. I've got to be ready to run away. Some people are super sensitive to that brain's uh, trigger that's trying to tell your body, get more sugar. And so they're very, we say it's emotionally driven, but some people are more sensitive to that. And so overeating and stress eating are real things that are driving that sugar up because the body's telling you, I need more sugar. So it's not just an internal, it's also an external. Your body's trying to get sugar from anywhere it can. Um, so that's a very real thing, inability to lose weight. It also, um, the cortisol and epinephrine and um, adrenaline also mess with your hormones, whether you're a man or a woman, it really messes with your levels of hormones. It can make your PMS, for women, it can make your PMS symptoms much worse on a regular basis. Um, it kind of amplifies all of those things. It, it changes hormone sensitivity on a cellular level, upregulating and downregulating those hormone receptors that are sitting on the cell walls. And um, there's just a number of hormone issues that are affected by stress. Testosterone levels um, in the short term will raise, but in the long term it depletes testosterone. Um, there's so many areas that are affected in hormone regulation. That a lot of times can lead to um, sleep imbalances because it can actually throw off your circadian rhythm as well. So you get sleep deprived, um, just a challenge to sleep, sometimes we say, well, it's just that my mind won't shut off because I've got all these things and anxiety. and um, Because you're running in that fight or flight mode, your heart rate goes up, your breathing rate goes up. Those things are the opposite of what is supposed to happen when you go to bed and go to sleep. Is You're supposed to relax to where everything down regulates and shuts off. When you're running under chronic stress, all of that is all rubbed up. Your heart rate is up. Your blood pressure is up. Um, your muscle tension is up. There is a tensing in the muscles that doesn't ever relax when you're in chronic sleep. All of those things prevent even falling into sleep. So that affects your sleep patterns. Your mood, it increases depression It um, through uh, different thinking patterns can increase depression. There's just um, a number of things I've touched on the hormone. Oh, and of course, cardiovascular. Um, the cortisol itself actually changes um, the lining in the artery walls, making them more susceptible to inflammation. Um, that plus um, pushing your blood pressure up and your heart rate up increases risk of heart attacks and strokes, um, increases your risk of plaque buildup. Um, so stress is a huge player in all of that. Um, another thing is your immune system. 
huge effects on your immune system. Chronic stress wipes out your immune system. Short-term stress actually pumps up your immune system. It, it boosts it up because your body's like, I might have to heal from a wound. Um, so it actually gives your immune system a big boost. But when you're chronically stressed, the immune system literally just wanes and it never has time to go in and repair anything or reset anything. And so your immune system function drops dramatically. You're way more susceptible to get sick, to get um, every virus that comes in the door. Your immune system just doesn't have any extra because you've kept it, you basically overworked it. It was running really high, but then you never have that time of rest period, of downtime, to where the body's able to clean up all the stuff, get rid of all the inflammatory markers, repair all that damage. It never happens. So you end up with an immune system that's actually tanked. It's way down, unable to respond to even the littlest, um, the littlest problem. So you, you wipe out your immune system when you're under chronic stress. Um, I think I hit all the big uh, systems that, uh, that it affects, really every area of your life. So <clears throat> um, that's bad. Even if you don't think you are stressed, you are stressed. If you live in the Western culture, your mind and body is so bombarded with constant things that stress your body out. Um, you may handle the stress mentally or emotionally. You're like, well, I'm okay, I'm okay, I can, I can handle it, I can do this. But that doesn't make any difference. To your body, it's doing the same thing. So there are... You know, there's mental ways, there's physical ways, there's emotional ways that you can de-stress because it's critical that you find times to de-stress and find activities to de-stress. Um, and it's not necessarily getting away. Um, sometimes it's things as simple as just unplugging um, from the internet. That is a huge mental stressor as we read something and get all caught up in this or that or um, it actually creates a lot of stress for your mind to always be busy um, so you know it can be as simple as okay I'm gonna turn off my phone an hour before I go to bed I'm not gonna sit there and scroll through Facebook or Pinterest or blah 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 um, I'm gonna shut off all electronics an hour before bed. That lets my mind start to, you know, decompress a little bit. Because what happens is we keep our mind so mentally um, busy just by the constant input of things, TV, doing all this stuff, and then you lay down and you're like, okay, sleep. Mm -mm, no, because that's when your mind starts to decompress and you know, think through things. So um, journaling is a good thing to do in the evenings, just to sit down. That lets you kind of pour everything out. You know, here's how my day went. Oh my word, it was so bad. But it lets that processing begin. That is actually healing to your mind to think through things um, mentally. And that works better for some people than for others. Some people have to talk that out with someone. Um, that's the way they process. But journaling is a really good way of helping that mental processing to happen before bedtime. So that's something that you can do. Um, you know, stretching, exercising, um, a, a low impact, low heart rate exercise before bed where you're just putting a little bit of stress on your body and then do a lot of stretching. Mentally, that helps. Um, that helps the mind to calm down and relax. So that's something. But finding things, something throughout the day that helps you to de-stress is a really big, um, important thing in our fast-paced culture, our electronic culture. Um, so coming up with regular habits, whether it's sketching or drawing, you know, if you're real right-brained, it might be something crafty where you sit down. If you're left-brained, you know, sit down and do Sudoku or do um, crossword puzzles or, you know, something that, yes, it's a, it's a logical step-by-step -step process, 
but it's something that lets your mind relax. Um, getting outside, not taking your phone with you, going for a walk um, after meals is really good for your body and your mind. Um, getting out in the sunshine when there's sun, that has a very calming effect, a very physical effect on raising your mood. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can try to work into every day. Um, and then, you know, I really believe that man needs a one day of rest in every week. Our body is just wired to where we have to set aside some time every single week to relax. And for me, that's taking a day out a week and saying this is family time, I don't do work on that time, that God designed man to rest on the seventh day. That is a physical need that we have to have, not just a spiritual thing to do, but you know that is my belief and all the evidence says, yes, we are way too stressed. You need a repeating day of unwinding, of unplugging, of looking at your friends and your family and you know enjoying times with relationships and um, and you know getting outside your own head and that just doesn't happen without intention so um, finding ways to de-stress is so important so and that's gonna look totally different for every person for what that looks like um, but you have to be conscious of it it happens intentionally um, so um, if you if you go back on this video and you go, oh my word, I have this problem and this problem and this problem and this problem and I'm eating right and I'm trying to do this and this and this and nothing's happening, look at the stress in your life. That is so huge because that stress factor just trumps everything else. When you are stressed, your body is not going to lose weight. It's not going to be healthy. Your immune system is going to be down. Your mental clarity is going to be down. Your sleep is going to be you know, deprived. All those things that I talked about. Um, stress plays a huge role and we are not meant to be as stressed as we are so I hope that's helpful um, and just that focus of needing to uh, needing to realize it's there and then finding steps that you can take to de-stress yourself is going to look different but it's absolutely necessary and part of your health journey and health plan so um, have a blessed day and a blessed week, and I will catch you next week. Bye.